So, if you are covering constitutional law, if you are reading constitutional law for the purpose of <coughs> mains, so side way you will be covering the polity section of. So, good afternoon, students. My name is Vishal, and I am a faculty of Intus IS. Students, I teach law optional here. So I have been getting a lot of questions from the students that is law scoring subject in UPSC mains. So I'll be discussing about all the relevant details regarding the law option. So first question of the students, people who are from the law background, they basically ask this one pertinent question: Is law scoring, or can we score high marks in law as compared to other subjects such as sociology, anthropology, or public administration? So students, going by the facts. <coughs> In 2023, mains the average marks that the students opting for law have secured is 280 out of, as you know, 500. So students basically have secured 280 marks out of 500 as an average, and the pass percentage of students who have opted for law option was. Approximately fourteen percent. Now, what do we mean by approximately fourteen percent? That means if hundred students have opted for law, fourteen of them were able to crack the examination. So, one thing, what do we infer from this information? One thing is that law is a viable optional subject. The students they ask question, and people from the law background, the people who have done their integrated five-year law course from law schools, plus students who have done their PG law. Basically, they ask, they keep asking me, "Sir, is law viable or not?" So the answer here is, going by the facts, yes, it is a viable option. So, <clears throat> moving on to the next part. So, what are the advantages of opting law as option? One thing is, the syllabus is. Concise. The syllabus is very concise. People keep saying basically <clears throat> that law is a bulky subject. We have substantive portion or substantive parts of the law as well as the procedural parts of the law. I keep telling them in UPSC mains there is only the substantive law. So UPSC does not ask questions from procedural law. Going by the syllabus, we have. Five main subjects. First is constitutional and administrative. So, students, the first paper consists of two subjects, two major subjects. constitutional and administrative law and second is international law both of them are theoretical subjects or conceptual subjects and one good thing about law optional is that the syllabus in the constitutional law overlaps with the gs paper So, if you are covering constitutional law, if you are reading constitutional law for the purpose of <coughs> mains, so side way you will be covering the polity section of GS paper as well. And the second thing is the question. There is definite syllabus. The question regarding constitutional and administrative law, basically, they are all from the constitution. Now, I'll give you an example. There is <coughs> there is a there is one part of the subject in constitutional law. That is the PIL, Public Interest Litigation. So UPSC keep asking this question on PIL. It talks about the evolution of PIL, that is the Public Interest Litigation in India, and how the PIL has helped in evolving or developing the jurisprudence on <coughs> female, or we can say jurisprudence on women rights. Apart from that, there is a possibility that UPSC can ask question regarding the role of PIL in development of certain fields of. So I keep telling students 
what you have to do is you just have to <clears throat> write down an introduction about the PIL and then you have to basically substantiate your answer with different cases. How do we substantiate? I'll give you an example. Suppose we were talking about the role of PIL in development of women rights in India. Now one can <clears throat> without any doubt rely on the Vishakha case. Vishakha versus state of Rajasthan. Now in this case the Supreme Court has issued guidelines regarding the protection of women from sexual harassment at both places. So this basically and now this case basically came up to the Supreme Court via PIL. So PIL has played an important role in <coughs> development of women rights in India. So basically if this question comes up in the mains, what do you have to do is we have to talk about the introduction of PIL just in 3-4 lines and you have to substantiate that the PIL has played a role in development of women rights in India and you have to substantiate your answer with cases such as Visha or in another words if UPC Keen keeps the portion as that discuss the role of PIL in development of environmental legislation or environmental law in India. So basically you will substantiate your answers with different cases such as MC Mata versus Union of India or Municipal Corporation Ratlam versus Virdicha. In these cases Supreme Court has basically given different directions and judgments regarding the <coughs> protection of environment. It has basically recognized that protection of environment or living in safe environment is a part of fundamental right. So what do we have to do is one important strategy in <coughs> writing down constitutional and international law portions is we have to substantiate our reasoning with different cases. Same in the case of international law. In the case of international law, basically the questions are direct. They are only, they are 15 topics, but mostly questions are asked from 7 to 8 topics. That is regarding the nature of international law, the relationship between international law and municipal law, the <coughs> topic of state succession, the topic of extradition and asylum, then we have different organs of UN, then we have the law of treaties. So in basically, most of the question in international law comes from 7, 8 topics. So what do we have to do? And these topics, mind, <coughs> mind my words, these topics are not very difficult. So what do we have to do is, we have to analyze the theory behind these topics. So one strategy is, in the first paper, we have to substantiate our reasoning with cases. Secondly, in case of international law, we have to read <coughs> different juries. Because it is a conceptual paper, it is a paper consisting of different concepts such as <coughs> the, uh, the relationship between international law and municipal law. So we have to read different theories given by different juries such as Austin, Croesus, Bentham. So here basically we can write a beautiful and a mark fetching answer just by <coughs> quoting the theories of the jury such as Austin, depending upon the question paper. So sometimes they can basically ask, something basically expect, UPC can expect that you have to prove the international law is not a law as such. Then you will basically rely on the <coughs> jurists who have tried to prove, who have given theories disproving the international law as a law as such. So what do we have to do in first paper is basically in constitutional law, we have to read the constitution plus we have to substantiate our understanding with the help of cases right and mind you the cases that will be studying in constitutional law most of them you must be aware of by a reading of polity for the purpose of gs papers and in the case of international law we have a limited <coughs> syllabus in which eight to nine topics are very important and those are easy secondly Talking about paper 2. Talking about paper 2 or option paper 2 basically. We have subjects such as law of crimes, law of thoughts, 
contracts and the last part is contemporary legal developments in this paper basically again i like to remind you is in law crimes we have the bns bharatiya nay sahita or the former ipc but we don't have the procedural law we don't have crpc or don't we or we don't have the evidence act so one thing that makes paper 2 easy is that we don't have to study the procedural law we only have to study the substantive law and we also don't have to study the entire bns there are certain topics that we have to study and again in ipc or in law of crimes we have seen in the past upsc have asked question uh, <coughs> giving facts so the student or the aspirant he has to identify the facts and he has to identify the applicable law again you can substantiate your answers with the help of cases so one thing that is common in paper 1 and 2 is that students we do read have to read cases to substantiate our reasoning to substantiate our theories we have to take the help of decided cases and in the cases mind you we have to be aware of the ratio what do we mean by ratio 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 decedent die ratio decedent die what is ratio decedent die the students from the law background they must be aware of this expression it means the <coughs> reason for the judgment right the reason on the grounds on the which basis of which the judgment has been passed so while quoting cases we have to be deeply aware of or we have to be aware of the ratio of the given case if you are aware of the ratio you will be able to <coughs> infer what is the reason or what are the grounds on the basis of which the judgment has been given and you can basically plant the ratio in your answers so it will be a good opportunity for you to fetch marks in the case of torts or law of torts as we call it we can say again cases are very important and again in the cases of torts basically the syllabus is not much the syllabus is we have at least 10 to 12 different topics in the law of torts such as we have the nature of torts then we talk about the different type of liability strict and absolute negligence nuisance defamation uh, not defamation basically <coughs> uh, malicious prosecution so all of these topics we have to read in torts and again basically we have to lay emphasis on cases because obviously law of torts is not codified in india so what do we have is a <coughs> catena of judgments so in paper 1 and 2 one thing that is common is cases we have to read cases <clears throat> by substantiating substantiating your answer with the help of cases you will be able to fetch good marks third thing that we have to do is we have to keep our readings limited limited readings now what do we mean by limited readings or limited i should correct myself limited source of readings students we basically have five major topics constitutional law and administrative law second international law third law of torts law of contracts or sorry contracts and law of crimes so these five major top major subjects you have to read at all cost you cannot afford to skip any of the topics because in paper 1 we only have on administrative and constitutional law in paper 2 we have variety of topics so five major topics that you have to develop command on is constitutional and administrative law second we have the international law third we have torts law of crimes and contract there are many minor topics in the syllabus such as alternative methods of dispute resolution or we have the prevention of corruption act or we have the <coughs> different laws related to protection of 
environments or we have <coughs> different type of intellectual property rights in india we also have the development of pil public interest litigation in india so all of these topics will keep them subsidiary and first of all a student has to focus on five major topics we all know basically in <coughs> paper 1 and paper 2 or we can say in the question paper we will have two section a and b that will consist of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 question number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 and 5 are compulsory and in total we have to do five questions so one is compulsory five is compulsory that means you have to attempt two questions now among remaining six you have to attempt three questions provided you choose one question from each at least one question from each of the part so if in case you choose to attempt three then you have to choose two questions from this part and you can so that means you are provided with variety of choices so that's why i am saying basically that <clears throat> you have five major topics a student preparing for law optional has to cover these five major topics first constitutional and administrative law international law law of torts law of contracts and law of crimes then basically <clears throat> we have to cover the other subsidiary topics suppose <clears throat> the mains the date of mains is nearby and you are not able to revise all of the topics then what you can do is you can focus on these five major topics and if you have enough time that you can focus on another remaining topics so these are basically this is these are the <coughs> few strategies that you can follow while preparing for your mains examination that's all for today thank you and for more of such informative videos stay tuned with plutus is